going quietly into the night, and it will be a joy to watch. Grab your popcorn, junior mints, or whatever makes you happy. The real show is about to begin. This will be true reality TV. No scripts, no rehearsals, just a gang of criminals pointing fingers at each other to save their own hides. A version of true crime and the reality show Survivor. The Deep State Exposed. Now, I told you more than a year ago, former FBI Director James Comey was the head of his own crime family and that he ran the upper echelon of the FBI like an organized criminal enterprise. That was limited to the upper echelon. The rank and file wouldn't have tolerated this. Even Bill Barr questioned it. The thing that's interesting about this is that this was handled at a very senior level of these departments. It wasn't handled in the ordinary way that investigations or counterintelligence activities are conducted. It was sort of an ad hoc small group, and most of these people are no longer with the FBI or the CIA or the other agencies involved. For the last two years, he and his gang of McCabe and Strzok and Baker and Page, Brennan and Clapper, all riffed on how horrible President Trump was, calling him treasonous, a Russian puppet or a Russian asset. They got away with it primarily because the mainstream media was receptive to their hateful narrative. After all, these were men in high positions in our government protecting us from Russia, and they needed to be respected. When truth be told, they were selling our democracy down the river. They were skilled at their jobs, leaking information to the media to get news stories to not only poison public opinion, but to create the basis to support a bloodless coup of a candidate and later president, Donald Trump. Now, like any criminal conspiracy, the players are arrogant and they think they're above the law. But mistakes are always made. Comey tells the president-elect the dossier is unverified. He presents it to the FISA court, though, as verified when he knew the truth long before. It was unverified, and it was a political document, not an intelligence document. But he used it to spy on a presidential campaign. Yeah, I used the word spy. Deal with it. Andrew McCabe, former deputy director of the FBI, is under criminal investigation. He claims he's a victim in all of this and that his firing is a result of attacks designed to undermine him. As if anyone cares about Andrew McCabe. McCabe lies not only to the FBI, but to the inspector general under oath. He's another leaker. It's no surprise that Attorney General Barr says he's still trying to get his arms around all of this. I thought when I came in uh, from the outside that uh, all the questions that I had and many other people had uh, that would be readily uh, answered uh, once I got in, but I haven't found that to be the case. And the problem is, it's going to be even more difficult because they are already pointing the finger and contradicting each other. Comey says the guy he most admires in government is James Clapper, another liar and leaker. This bozo, like you, Jim, flatly denied leaking the dossier. He even released a statement that assured the incoming president that neither he nor anyone in the intel community was responsible for the leak. Meanwhile, Clapper told Comey to tell the president about the dossier, and yet when he appeared before a congressional committee, he flatly denies leaking the dossier, but later admits, he told CNN and other news outlets about it. What I will say is that, uh, you know, I've, I've been trying to get answers to questions, and I found that a lot of the answers have been inadequate, and I, I've also found that uh, some of the explanations I've gotten don't hang together. So, in, in a sense, I have more questions today than I did when I first started. Of course the answers are inadequate. They're all rewriting history, pointing the finger at each other to save their own butts. Comey is now trashing Rod Rosenstein, saying Rosenstein didn't have anywhere near the inner strength to stand up to Donald Trump. I knew he didn't. 
Rosenstein then goes back at Comey and says, I will not sit here and listen to James Comey analyze my character. I'm not going to put up with it. So, Brennan and Comey are now accusing each other of being a liar and being the first to put the fake document into the intelligence community. They're actually fighting with each other, too. Now, Brennan was the head of the, FBI, of the CIA. He says the recent review of their actions is crazy. It's nothing more than a fishing expedition. Have you noticed that Brennan, John Brennan, always uses the excuse, I had bad intelligence? This guy was the head of the CIA. It's called the Central Intelligence Agency for a reason. Focus on intelligence. Maybe Brennan and Comey, who are accusing each other, are both right. They are both lying. And the amazing part of all this is that there's no more denying the existence of a deep state. Instead, they're saying, hey, it wasn't me. Now, James Baker, the former FBI top lawyer accused of illegally leaking to authorities, actually goes on the Skullduggery podcast, and he points the finger at Comey, saying folks in the FBI worried that Comey was trying to blackmail Trump a la J. Edgar Hoover style, but that he's confident he did nothing wrong although mistakes will certainly be found. Here's the bottom line, folks. This finger-pointing is not happening between lawyers in private rooms. It's happening in the public square for all to see. They know that Bill Barr is a serious prosecutor who has appointed another serious prosecutor, John Durham, to review the origins of the Trump-Russia investigation. And try as the New York Times will, this is not an inquiry. For John Durham, the United States attorney charged with reviewing the genesis of the Trump-Russia collusion investigation, indictments are his stock in trade. He is looking into the CIA's role and the FBI's role, which will inevitably lead him to the roles of Susan Rice, Samantha Power, and good old Loretta Lynch, all compromised by their political agenda to destroy Donald Trump and to hell with America. Now, I told you last week that Bill Barr was a cool cat. But while the Democrats hyperventilate and hysterically accuse him of everything they can think of and hold him in contempt, Barr remains lucid, focused, and unflappable. He further explained that the histrionics of the left is actually laughable. I think it's largely being made to try to discredit me, partly because they may be concerned about the outcome of a, of a review of what happened during the, uh, during the election. But uh, obviously, you can look at the face of my testimony and see on its face that there's nothing uh, inaccurate about it. Now, at the beginning of this open, I may have made light of all of this, but I don't relish what is happening. Rats like these who use and abuse the enormous power that we give them are an embarrassment to all the hardworking men and women in the law enforcement and intelligence communities. But the biggest disappointment is yet to come. When the guy who has been so deadly silent on all of this will be the one that all the rats eventually point their dirty fingers at. And that's my open. Let me know what you think on my Facebook and Twitter, hashtag Judge Janine.